All right, hello and welcome to the 2024 College Disc Golf National Championship. We're here at Winthrop University in beautiful Rock Hill, South Carolina. Kicking things off with us today is the Cincinnati D1 team, the defending champs. Fellas, let's just start with where we're at, uh, Winthrop University, a uh, historic place in disc golf. You know, what, what was it like, you know, getting on campus and getting on this course whenever you arrived? Yeah, it's such a such a historic place. Um, the three of us, me, Bradley, or me, Ilkin, and Lucas, have actually played here before. Um, so we were slightly familiar with the property, um, and then we kind of showed Bradley the ropes yesterday during our first practice round. And uh, feeling great, feels great to be out here. The weather's beautiful. Um, should be an exciting week. You know what makes this place so challenging and unique? The OB, <laughs> the OB and hazard everywhere. Um, just wide open holes uh, where you have to find your lines and kind of create your own lines and shape your own shots. Um, it's just different from anywhere else. All right, uh, Tanner and Bradley, obviously back last year from the championship team. Uh, what what has this past year been like when you're out competing with that, you know, def defending the title kind of mentality? Yeah, um, there's definitely there can be a bit of a target on our back sometimes. It feels like, but. Uh, we try to just shake that off and just play our own game. Um, we know that we're a solid team uh, if we just be ourselves and stay true to who we are. You know, what is the strength of this team? Um, Bradley? It's, I'd say our main strength is our distance. So it's great having Lucas here. He's got a big forehand, which I think is going to be great on this course. And I think we're just overall a really consistent team, and we have everything in the bag. You know, what's, what's it been like, you know, back home since y'all won the title? Have you seen more support from the university and, and the surrounding community? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the greater Cincinnati disc golf community is amazing. Um, I truly believe it's one of the best in the country. And uh, they've been great rallying around us. Uh, we can feel the support for sure. It's It's been great. Uh, the university has also stepped up. They've helped us out um, financially in a few ways. And uh, it's been great. You know, just being back here, um, you know, 150 teams, it's larger than last year. I mean, just kind of break down the atmosphere of what it's like playing in the college this off national, national championships, which just uh, uh, you can feel the competitive atmosphere in the air more so than maybe your normal tournament that you go play. You can for sure. And uh, the field is only getting deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger. Uh, we were just looking at it the other day and me and Ilkin were talking about how the field is great. There's so many good teams out here with the potential to win, and uh, it's going to be a challenge, but we're up for it. All right. Speaking of Ilkin, uh, welcome to college. Uh, Two-time major you. winner. Um, talk about your experience of, of joining you know, a college team and, and going through this with these guys. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been really cool. It's been a lot of fun. Um, disc golf's an individual sport mostly, um, and kind of you feel alone in that way a little bit. Like I, I enjoy it, but uh, being on a team has been a lot of fun. Uh, these guys kind of recruited me to come in. I was probably going to UC anyway, but they're like, "Come join us. Let's go. We just won the national championship." I was like, "Okay, bet. Let's go." Um, but yeah, it's been a whole lot of fun. Um, and yeah, just being on a team playing those doubles formats is an absolute blast. I mean, how crazy is that to even have disc golf being a factor in where you're going to school and, and know, you know where we're at in the sport right now? No, it, it's it's amazing. It's super cool. Um, I know there's a, a lot of even disc golf scholarships going around now. Um, it's super cool to see the growth that way. Um, yeah, and I mean, just to know that UC, yeah, my major uh, was a great factor as well to go into UC, but also to have that um disc golf side of it where we just came, came off the national championship it's close to home worked out perfectly for me cool all right back to tanner real quick one more all right you know, you know what was the strategy like what were you telling your guys coming down here on on the trip you know uh back back to defend the title how are y'all attacking this week yes sir we're back um the strategy stays the same we're just going to play our game stay true to who we are um th there's no doubt that we can do it if we play to our level of how we can play, and uh, we're excited. All right, that's your defending champ, Cincinnati. We'll be right back.
All right, and we are back with Emporia State. Well, let's just start with where we're at, uh, Winthrop University, an iconic venue. Cade, what was it like when you first got on this property and started throwing around these historic holes? Yeah, I think it was really cool for all of us, especially just watching USDGC all these years and uh, just remembering all the iconic shots and holes that you know we've seen the great players execute before and just walking up to those same holes, it's pretty cool. You know, what's been the big biggest difference from seeing the course in person to maybe seeing it on video, like a whole 17 USDGC, for example? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty surprising to see, like on coverage. I mean, there's a lot of people that make it look very easy, but also a lot that you see like take big numbers. And I think that the my biggest surprise so far is that none of the holes are particularly easy, but there's a lot of ways to avoid danger. And that's kind of something that we've been working on. Nice. Well, stay in the winter vein real quick with EMAC. Obviously, you've seen this course many, many times. What, what was your advice for uh, your teams coming to attack Winthrop? Uh, really easy, actually, as far as advice goes, just keep it in bounds, honestly. Um, I, I, like you said, I've played this course many, many times, and I've had some fantastic rounds, and I've had some awful rounds. And I feel like um, when I played well, it was because I was keeping the disc in bounds and hitting putts. So uh, with, with looking at the weather this week, tomorrow's a little hit or miss on – depending on what tee time you got, if you're going to be playing in the rain or the wind. So uh, I think coming out of this course around even par in those conditions is going to be solid, uh, just avoiding really big numbers out there. What is it about this place that adds just the pressure on top of the OB? It's Winthrop. I mean, it's it's historic, you know. I mean, coming down the stretch, I know it's not going to be hole 17 this year. It'll be 14, I believe. Uh, that hole is... It's scary. I don't care if you're playing for first place or you're playing for last place. Stepping up there, if you don't get butterflies on that tee, that tee pad, you're you're not human, I guess I would say. But uh, but yeah, it's it's just it's just Winthrop, man. All right, Eric, just stay with you a couple a couple more questions. So you know, what about the venue change to a place like Winthrop? Yeah, um, you know, when we heard about it last year, I was I was skeptical. I guess maybe I don't know if skeptical is the right word for it. I was really stoked to be at uh, um, North Cove last year. Uh, for me personally, bringing three different teams here and having to travel to different courses every day is, is a challenge. And last year was really nice to have every course on one piece of property. And the courses last year were phenomenal. Uh, not taken away from the courses that we're playing this year. Obviously, you know, having a beauty like Winthrop in the mix is going to be huge. Um, so uh, it's growing on me. It's growing on me. The one thing I do like is we're not in the middle of nowhere. So we have, you know, food options and uh it's not it's not terribly far it's it's honestly a lot like emporia as far as getting around and getting to the courses so it, it's definitely growing on me all right last one for you eric uh year two involved in college disc golf uh, you know what have you learned as a coach and as a big mover and shaker in college disc golf you know, in year two sure um learned a lot actually uh it's it's been an honor to be honest with you obviously i got to give a shout out to emporia kansas and emporia state university for for believing in, in disc golf and, and uh, taking, on, taking on us as a team, all of us, all, uh, all 12 of us actually that, that came out this year. Um, being under the athletic umbrella as opposed to under clubs is, is just huge and phenomenal for each one of us. It gives us a little more time to focus on our games uh, instead of being stressed out about how we're going to get out here. So huge shout out to the city of Emporia um, and then obviously Emporia State University. And Dynamic has helped us along the way as well. So. All right, talk. Go back to Cade real quick. Just you know, tell us about this past year and how this team has continued to grow and evolve. You know, on the course. Yeah. So I think our first event was pretty shaky. We had um, half our team was new from last year. Um, so I think our first event we definitely weren't in sync. We we ended up being our only loss of the year, and I think that really um, motivated and helped us realize um, really how we need to play moving forward. And I think as the year's gone on, we've just gotten better and better. And our last two regionals that we've played in Arizona and then Emporia, feels like we've really been clicking team side of it. And then I think the singles side too, we've we've all been really coming along. You know, what's the experience like as, as a college or as a, someone going to college and getting to travel to like Arizona from Kansas to play disc golf? Yeah, I mean, it feels like you're like the university's priority when you get treated like that. And it's really awesome. And uh, we can't thank Emporia State enough for all that they do for us because without ESU and the, you know, support that they give us, I mean, we would be, you know, paying our way to any place that we wanted to go. Um, and also Eric for stepping into the role of being the coach and really um, putting the initiative to get us to all these cool places. Yeah, I mean, it's 
college disc golf in the grand scheme of things is pretty young and y'all are you know kind of at the forefront of growing it so what, what does it mean to be a disc golfer to have you know disc golf being a factor where you're going to school yeah i mean for me it was different because i was going, coming back home in emporia to go to emporia state no matter what and the team just so happened to start the year that i came to emporia um, but it's awesome i really hope that you know everyone on this team and eric that we can just um kind of get um, the younger kids excited about college disc golf. So hopefully, you know, when they're, you know, 16, 17, they're, they're looking to go play college disc golf somewhere, and hopefully that's Emporia State. Um, but, you know, I really hope that the young kids now see what's going on and how awesome it is and really take advantage of the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do this. Nice. We got Justin with us. Yeah. All right. Uh, just a couple for you, man. You know, uh, back again, what's the strength of this team? I think our biggest strength is probably how well we get along with one another. Uh, we always find a way to come together as a group, and that's probably our largest strength is we always find a way to pick each other up. Nice. You know, what's been your favorite part so far this week being here at Winthrop and in Rock Hill in general? Uh, for me personally, it's it's the beauty of the place. Uh, I'm a big nature buff. I love plants. I love animals. And being around a, such a different environment than Kansas, this is uh, this is amazing for me personally. Cool. All right, Cade, back to you just for a couple more. We'll wrap this up. You know, what's the mentality coming in this week? You know, so close last year. Uh, how, how big of a factor was that, you know, attacking this year and getting back here? Oh, uh, yeah, we definitely wanted to be back here, and I feel like um, we've got the pieces to put ourselves in the position to have a chance again this year. And I think really is you can't look you can't look ahead. You've got a round of – we got a round – ahead of us tomorrow and right now that's all we're focused on and it's we're going to take it one day at a time one shot at a time and just go out and give it our best well that's perfect and that's emporia state men's team thanks fellas we'll be right back thank you All right, we are back at Winthrop with the Emporia State women's team, the number one ranked Emporia State women's team.
first of all, uh, introduce yourselves and uh, you know maybe how long you've been playing disc golf. Alrighty, I am Atlanta Kruger. I've been playing disc golf for about 10 years now. And my name is Maya Ringgold, and I've been playing disc golf about two years now. Awesome. Well, uh, let's just start with the rankings. You know, number one, uh, how did y'all attain that ranking? Um, what, what has been the strength for your team so far this year? Um, well, first, how we obtained the ranking. I mean, we were going into our regional event in Emporia at two, number two, I believe. And we played really solid out there. Maya and I stuck to our game plans well, and we managed to take it down, and that bumped us up. And I'd say Maya and I play really well together in general, and that's that has a lot to do with our gameplay and everything, and our ranking is we're a really great team. Yeah, anything to add? Like, what is the strength, and how do y'all play? You know, on and off against one one another. Yeah, so um, I definitely agree with Atlanta. We we really complement each other. I think that I can bring in the safe play that gives Atlanta the confidence to truly execute what she's capable of. Obviously, she's been playing a lot longer, and so she can really take out some of the tools in her tool in her toolbox. And so I think that is really advantageous and just bringing good energy with each other. We can lift each other up. We don't get upset with each other and we just have each other's backs. I mean, she's got some experience on you on the course, obviously, but what's a lesson that she has taught you about playing the game? She has taught me to just trust myself, I would say. Um, she definitely uh, gives me feedback that is helpful and she tells me things that like really just goes to show that I do have a lot more skill than sometimes I give myself credit. All right. What, what's the biggest advice you've heard from a coach behind you? Play your game. <laughs> that, that sounds sh strong advice too. Very yes. simple and to the point and very uh, accurate. So what, what are the courses like? How are y'all, have y'all enjoyed practice so far? Yeah, we've really enjoyed it. Um, I actually played at U.S. Women's last week. And so I think that that was a really good warm up for this major. <laughs> And so it's it's been nice because I feel like I got a lot of practice last week hitting lines, and that's a lot of what you need out here. Mm -hmm. No, the courses are beautiful. It's so gorgeous out here, and there's so much different plant life. I've been all excited. The flowers are just amazing. But it's super fun, different shots and different distances. I like how we have some longer holes out on Winthrop Meadows, and some the other courses seem to be shorter, but definitely fun, a good variety for everybody's games. Really enjoying it. You know, the, the plant life looks a little different, but as far as, you know, playing in Emporia, you have a large variety of courses there. How has that been a factor in kind of getting you ready for whatever you see, wherever y'all go? Um, Emporia is really great for learning to read the wind, that's for sure. Definitely taught me a lot about wind golf, still learning, but super helpful. And distance, there's a lot of longer courses, but we have a good variety with like Peter Pan and Jones West thrown in there, get a try some shorter shots along with your longer holes. Really helpful there too. You know, what, what do you think of the atmosphere so far? I mean, there's 150 colleges represented, different countries, 700 players. You know, what's it like just being around that many you know, uh, college players? I think it's awesome. I think it's super cool to see how big the sport's getting and see the growth and everybody out here and just one big group of college disc golfers having a good time. And I'm super excited to see how it goes this weekend. Are you feeling any pressure or do you feel, you know, the kind of competitive nature that is this tournament? I can feel, I feel the competitive nature for sure. I'm a competitive person in general, but I'm really just going into this trying to play my own game, keep my head on my shoulders and just one shot at a time. All right. And then coming, coming from U.S. Women's, um, is that, you think that helped the pressure? Yeah, I actually do. Um, I didn't necessarily go into U.S. Women's with any expectations, um, I played above my rating but didn't play my game, so it was a little bit disappointing. But I think that getting that first major off of your back so that I could come into this one and just in the practice round felt really relaxed and just going to try and uh, just stick with my game. And, uh, I mean, I do feel a little bit of pressure from the singles round aspect just because that plays a, a huge role into how we do um, for the rest of the tournament. 
And so there's a little pressure there, but I'm just trying to use some of the techniques that I, I learned from last week uh, and bring it into this week. Yeah, you're coming from a record-setting U.S. women's to a record-setting college <laughs> disc golf, so that's a, a heck of a couple-week run. Um, you know, only playing for two years, so what is it about disc golf that kind of got you hooked to where you're traveling all over the country and, and playing the sport? Well, um, it, it just became a passion. I actually started playing. I'm a non-traditional student, and I started playing actually when I was pregnant with uh, my son. And so, and also my dad's a disc golfer. And so I kind of had a little bit of, of a history there. And once I, I started playing, like, I mean, every disc golfer kind of says it, says it, so it's cliche, but um, just watching the flight of the disc and then the challenge too, I, I think um, you can be competitive with others, but also just always being able to have the opportunity to improve as a person, I think is huge. And you can really apply that with disc golf. You know, uh, you know, going back to the men's team, y'all, Emporia State's obviously highly ranked in, on both teams. How do you think traveling and practicing and playing with them has helped y'all improve and vice versa? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that uh, playing with the men, it can be really helpful because obviously uh, it's a dominant sport for for men and I think that it's really easy to compare yourself to the men and their abilities and so I think what can be helpful is they sometimes see things in your form and they can help like critique here and there um, I've had some practice rounds with Justin and he's been able to say hey Maya like why don't you try you know this shot and it's something that I've never thought of and so um, I think no matter the skill level and, and who you're with, there's always things that other people can teach you. And just being a sponge to that, I think, is really what can help set you up for the next level. All right. Well, well you know, win, lose, draw, what is the top goal for y'all this week? Um, I would say it's just play our games one shot at a time, honestly. It's a mental game for sure. And just keeping our heads on our shoulders. And I think that if we just play – the best that we can we go out there we have fun we stay competitive we execute our shots we execute what we want to do and i think what we will end up on top hopefully in a good position that's what we're going for right perfect all right that is emporia state your number one women's team heading into the college disc golf national championships good luck we'll see you out there this week thank you thank you
All right, we are back with Oregon's Taylor Chosek. Taylor, um, coming straight from a track and field meet a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. Um, just start there. Um, you're yeah. here, a true dual sport athlete between track and field and disc golf. So mm -hmm. talk about your spring and how busy you've been just traveling around competing in both. Yeah, so we just finished up our winter season. So we just had our first couple of spring term meets. So just came from that, competed on Friday and just headed out here, obviously, obviously a long way. So yeah, but starting off good, got some promising performances already. So just looking to carry that into the season. All right, so how long have you been playing disc golf? Um, I take a couple of years now, just started doing tournaments and things pretty early into when I started, just kind of on and off, usually playing mostly in the summer just because track goes through fall, winter, spring. Nice. But now, this year, finally taking that step to try and play a little bit more while track is also going on. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, a lot to juggle. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, how long have you been competing in track and field and what events are you competing in? Yeah, so I started in middle school, but did a lot of sports and then finally settled on track uh, partially through high school. Um, and I do the heptathlon, so basically most events that you can name. So hurdles, high jump, shot put, 200, long jump, javelin, 800. So all the sports I did before really helped to, you know, make me the athlete that's able to do all of that. Yeah, where, where can you draw from any number of those sports and competitions into disc golf like where is the comparison or is there a comparison or any yeah. overlap there yeah i'd say just physically being able to maximize how i move my body and things just because track is all about pushing your limits so i think that's helped me you know pick up distance pretty quickly and then mentally being able to compete with the best uh athletes in the nation and even in the world uh and being able to you know keep your cool and um compete has helped with disc golf a lot as well Nice. And then, you, you know, you go from that to an event like college disc golf. We, you know, there's 150 teams here, mm -hmm. uh, top schools in the country. What, what has been your experience so far here in Rock Hill this week? Yeah, it's super cool so far. I've, I've met a lot of the girls that I'm going to be playing with out on the course, which is new being um, in Eugene. There's not a ton of women players, yet alone around my age. So it's really cool to just see, um, you know, people that I see myself in out there and be able to strike up conversations. You know, well, how's your college disc golf season been so far? Where, where did you compete? Well, this uh, is my first event. First event, yeah, okay. I've never uh, been to like a college uh, thing before. So, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm just taking it all in. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, what was the draw to come out here for this to be your first event? Um, well, just looking at the schedule most events I can't do. We pretty much have track meets every weekend, including this past weekend. So I thought I would just be like rushing over. But um, yeah, having the timing work out that I could come out and then obviously it being a major and just a huge event, I feel like this is the one to go to if uh, you want to get that experience. All right. What, what is the strength of your game out on the course, would you say? Um, well, I've been working on my putting a lot. And then uh, I guess distance, which isn't as relevant for this course that we're going to be playing. There's a lot of really touchy 200 foot shots so yeah all right yeah break down the courses a little bit for us um what what's what's it going to take out there to you know exceed on the courses yeah i think putting is going to be a big one all of these most of the holes are kind of i wouldn't say birdie or die but they're they all have that birdie possibility to them so um making sure you pick those up and just i mean as always avoiding bogeys all right you've seen the so many huge events, you know, on track and field. How do you see college disc golf continuing to grow? Yeah, that's, we were actually just talking about that, but maybe just having more qualifiers to be able to get here. Cause like I said, I hadn't played, but I'm able to come, but just looking at how disc golf is growing right now, it seems good to, you know, have as many people as you can come and just make this a big event, but looking forward, having that qualifier and just getting the best of the best to be competing against each other. You know, track and field's probably got to be one of the most you know competitive sports, like atmosphere-wise, when you're when you're out there competing. Um, do you, are you feeling that here, or do you feel like the seriousness and the competitive vibes yet, or do you think that'll kick off tomorrow? I think that'll probably kick off tomorrow. I'm just you know off the flight, not trying to worry too much about how things are going, and also just coming from track, having that competitiveness basically all the time. You know, I'm practicing with some great athletes every day. So it's nice to kind of just have a little breather from that and just have fun. Awesome. Well, Taylor, you might be the busiest person here, so we won't <laughs> take up too much of your time. Uh, good luck and have fun out there this week. All right. Thank you.
All right, and we are back with Rebecca. Oh, not Rebecca. <laughs> That's younger sister, the Dawn sisters. There's actually three of them, including a recent uh, U.S. Women's Champion. We'll talk about that. So, first of all, you know, welcome to Rock Hill. You know, what has been your experience so far this week? It's been great. Yeah, it's been fun being here with the whole team. It's nice and warm down here, which is awesome. Um, I love the course. We played the we played the meadows this morning, which went pretty well. It was very fun. It's a nice change from the weather in Canada, for sure. <laughs> yeah, what's it doing in Canada right now? Do y'all know? I think it's five degrees, maybe, and raining. I think <laughs> so, that's what we heard. So it's very nice weather here. All right, we're here with Leah and Sarah. Excuse me, sorry. Side note: Little sister Rebecca won. U.S. Women's a couple weeks ago, so let's start there. You know, three disc golfing sisters. How did y'all get into the sport, and uh, you know, what's the family, you know, atmosphere like when you are out there competing? In 2021, our brother, or now brother-in-law, introduced us to disc golf, and now the entire family plays. We have a course on our home, and yet yeah, most family gatherings we play around doubles. Doesn't really matter wherever we go. We typically play disc golf as a family which is fun. Yeah, does it get competitive out there? A little bit. Um, not too much between siblings or anything. I think it's mostly with ourselves that we're like, we want to do better. And yeah, no, it's a great time going out there with family, going to tournaments. And usually on the way there, we'll be like, okay, what's your goal? What's your goal? And like, yeah, figure out what we want to shoot that day. But normally it's not really competition between us we all kind of want everyone to do well but yeah it's a great time you know, you know, tell us a little bit about your journey to get here um, did, did y'all do any qualifiers or did you just sign up and, and come to play um yeah we did Pennsylvania in October I think yeah in October we did Pennsylvania that was very cool it's beautiful out there um you got first in that one which was really cool <laughs> uh and then in february we just went to trinity western in bc and um our guys team qualified d1 there which was really cool <laughs> uh yeah no it's been a great time <laughs> yeah, what has been the experience like here you know this is 150 schools represented 700 players um, well, you know, what's it like to just come out and see so many players from all over the country, all over North America, all, all around the world, really, uh, you know, competing and playing disc golf? Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> this morning, even, we were playing and we saw the UK team and they started talking and that was really cool. Everyone's, yeah, from different areas and it's very surreal for sure. <laughs> It's definitely different from normal tournaments, having people our own age all competing together. And the women's division is so much bigger than usual. Usually we play against max 15 other people, which is not the case this week. So it's a very cool and different experience. Are you feeling the kind of competitive vibes already? Or do you think that's going to kind of pick up as, as the tournament gets going? It'll probably pick up more when the tournament gets going. Uh, I'm just excited to see all the other women I'm playing against and yeah I just want to play the best that I can I know there's a big difference in all the ratings and so I have no idea how I'm gonna do within that so I just want to play well for me what, and what, yeah what are y'all's individual strengths I mean how, how do y'all play together as, as a team who's driving who's putting who's <laughs> upshotting the problem is that we're sisters, so we're pretty similar. <laughs> in doubles, it doesn't really help because we throw very similar shots. But I typically like to throw a distance backhand, I think. You have a good forehand, too. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> I can sometimes putt well, and I have a decent turnover backhand <laughs> if I release it properly. <laughs> but, Yeah. <laughs> You know, what's it like competing on this property? You know, we, we were talking about, you know, USDGC and Throw Pink being held here every year. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all are playing a little different course, but, you know, what's it like just seeing some of these iconic holes? It's pretty crazy because we had watched uh, a tournament that was held here last year, I think, and it's crazy walking the course and being like, oh, I recognize that hole. Like, we just saw people play that. <laughs> it's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what 
what do you think about just this even being a thing that you're going to college and you're representing your school and you're here uh, kind of in the middle of South Carolina with all these people so uh, how does that even uh, how do you even compute that I don't know it's <laughs> it's pretty crazy I didn't I would never have pictured this happening to be honest like I would have never thought of myself as being on a college sports team or anything but last summer um, we were asked if we wanted to do it like hey would you want to do like a redeemer disc golf team and like go travel places and we were both like yeah <laughs> that sounds awesome but to actually be here doing this is yeah very crazy very exciting for sure it didn't really seem real last summer. They were just like, hey, want to be on a team? We're like, sure. Cool. And then found out we're the first team in Ontario and that we're coming to South Carolina and we went to BC and Pennsylvania, places I had never been before. So it's a very different experience. It's very cool to think that I would be in class right now and I'm loving being here instead. <laughs> And now you're playing disc golf. What, yeah, now what, what has golf. been the support from Redeemer and the local community, disc golf community back home? The disc golf community has been amazing. They, We would not be able to be here without them. With all the fundraising that we've done to be here, it's, yeah, it's a miracle that we're actually here and that we're able to compete and afford to be here. So, yeah, the disc golf community from back home has been amazing. And yeah, I love being able to support Redeemer here as well. Our student senate has been able to uh, donate some money to fund this and everything, which has been great. Yeah, it's great supporting Redeemer. <laughs> All right. Well, what would you say is your number one goal this week? What What do you want to go home with, feeling like you've accomplished? Honestly, for me, I just want to have a really good attitude and enjoy every moment out here, whether I play well or not. I think. Yeah, just having a really fun time, meeting a lot of new people, and playing as well as I can. But even if I don't do well, just keeping up a good attitude and enjoying the moment. Yeah, I also, I like I said before, I want to play well to my own standards. I don't really know how that's going to play with the rest of the girls. I just want to play well for me and also enjoy being out here. You two being here, what what does that mean for the future of Redeemer Disc Golf? How do you hope to see this kind of grow from y'all coming down here for the first time? I think we want to keep doing this. I We only want the club to grow. Hopefully funding will become easier throughout the years. And this is only my first year, so I'm hoping to keep coming back. <laughs> yeah, this is sadly my last year, but I'm glad that we were able to start it before I left, which is great. But I think... In the future, our sister might be coming to Redeemer, too. She can also join the team. Oh. But, yeah, I think we have a really bright future for the Redeemer team, for sure. Awesome. Well, Leah and Sarah, thank you so much for the time. Nice to meet you all. We'll see you out there this week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
All right, we're back, and we're now joined by Alexis Kerman, two-time college disc golf national champion, and now employee of college disc golf. So yeah, let's just start there. Uh, you know, what is your title, and and what are you doing to help make this thing go? I don't know. Like my title is very fluid, so I'm really excited that. I'm on board with college disc golf, especially with my experience over the past two years with college disc golf as a competitor. Um, so I really have come on and been helping John and the college disc golf staff with compliance. So roster verification, membership processing and verification um, and answering emails and just kind of being that buffer between players and the information that they're looking for um, here. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Sounds like a perfect gig, you know, yes. moving over from player uh, to staff. Um, well, break down your your experience as a player, you know, through the two years or more that yeah. you were out here competing. Yes. And, and some lessons that you learned, some memories that you have, and just kind of sum it up for us a little bit. For sure. So I started competing in collegiate disc golf because I went back to the University of Missouri to get my graduate degree in natural resources. And my... Um, project thesis was on disc golfing. So I actually did a study um, for disc golf in Columbia, Missouri in that area. And so that was really fun. And I was just looking for another way to get more involved with disc golf. And there just happened to be uh, at that time a disc golf team. And, you know, there still is. And I was like, well, you know, let me find something fun to do. And so I um, actually played with Renee Beasley, who I won my two titles with, um, team champion titles with. She played our women's league in Columbia, and I knew she was an undergraduate student at the time, and the rest was history. And yeah, lots of memories uh, with the team, especially last year was so cool getting that second title. Uh, two years in a row felt really special with my the same partner, Renee and making memories with the two other teams of women that came last year, which was really cool to see our women's program last year grow like that from the first year that I competed. So uh, I think it just, it was fun. And that is what's extra unique about college disc golf and why I'm so happy I get to be involved because now that I'm back here working I'm seeing things behind the scenes I get to see all of these collegiate athletes we have in their programs coming super pumped super excited and that's just awesome to see what we're doing for them you know this event and this you know college disc golf in general has grown so much in three years what what's the big a big leap from last year to this year even well i think just the fact that our venue has changed is really cool um you know we have been at north cove the past two years at least since i played and now we're here in rock hill south carolina and i think that's a testament to the growth that college disc golf is also seeing more courses a bigger venue just a bigger event and i think that's like the biggest thing we can see more teams wanting to be involved who have not been involved involved before who are coming and putting in the effort and the work on their part to get here. So that's super, super cool to see. When you started working with College Disc Golf officially, did you come in with like, hey, this is something we need to be doing right now or was it or did you kind of ease into it? I think I'm easing into <laughs> it. You know, it's uh, I I worked for five years before I went back for my graduate degree in event management and programming and in outdoor recreation. So, you know, although I have like some of those skills from school and my professional life or career, um, I'm just trying to see like, okay, where are we at? What can I help with? I love being involved in the way that I am. I love getting to communicate and talk with all of these athletes and team leaders, managers and coaches. Um, and, you know, I hope we can continue to grow what we have or what has been created here at College Disc Golf because it's so special. And there is so much opportunity for this to become even more than it is right now. And I'm all on board for whatever that looks like, um, especially on the women's side. I'm here, go women, love to see all these female, young female athletes here. So awesome. So I'm, I'm all here for it. You know, so many of these women, this is probably the most women they've ever played with. Too. Yeah. And it's been a big talking point, you know, year in and year out. Mm -hmm. So very cool to see. Sounds like this is the perfect job for you and your experience and your education and everything. So what, what do you think is the next step for college disc golf? 
See, I think that's a hard thing. Again, there's so much room for opportunity. I don't think there's one thing uh, that would be the next step other than the growth. Watching this grow and become um, even bigger than it is now. I think I work heavily with the season. So that's our regional and our conference events. So when I look at next steps, when we think about the season, and that's what teams are doing to get to here, to get to nationals. What does that look like? That for me is where the focus is at and uh, where we really want to grow because if we can get them in the season, then we can get them here at nationals. And that's what we want to see. Now, how have you seen kind of the relationships between teams and universities kind of grow over the past few years, not just at Missouri, but, you know, across the board, there's, you know, we were talking with Ilkin Grow earlier, yes. a two-time yes. major winner who – Disc golf was a factor in him going to Cincinnati. Yeah. So what what does that mean to you? I mean, you? isn't that insane? Like to even say that out loud, disc golf was a reason somebody chose to go to a school. That's insane. Um, and I think we see a lot more of that. When I see emails coming through, I'm seeing more players reaching out to schools about, hey, I play disc golf. I play in MA2 or MA3, and I'm really looking to play in college. So what can I do? How do I get on your team? They are looking to be a part of disc golf at a college. And that's not something, you know, a lot of people even two, three years ago really even thought about. But there are scholarships now for disc golf. That's really cool. Um, and then, you know, when we see – more people getting into disc golf on maybe the academia side, like myself, we have more research, like more peer-reviewed articles that can come out. And that's important for the growth of the sport as a whole. And so, um, yeah, I think there's just like, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of young kids coming up that are going to help make college disc golf and disc golf as a whole grow. Awesome. Well, Alexis, thank you for being a champion for college disc golf on and off the course, and uh, we'll see you out there this week. Thanks. Looking forward to it.
Yeah. All right, we're back with UK universities. I, you know, all right, break it down. Hi there. All right, where are we, where are we from, and who are we representing? If you want to just kind of go around the. The table here. Yeah, we're all from universities within the United Kingdom. So I myself went to Warwick University. My name's Jack. Um, most people know me as Jill. I'm from Loughborough University. I'm James. I'm from the University of Plymouth, down south. I'm also James from Loughborough University. I'm Ophelia. I'm representing Birmingham Newman University. I'm Christina. I'm from Loughborough University. And I'm Al from uh, University of Chester. All right, now, how, how did this come about? The, the banning of so many different players from different colleges and different countries? Yeah, I think countries. compared to uh, just being here for a, a two days and, and seeing the standard of disc golf here and, and the size of it, um, we just don't have the same capacity in the UK for us to send uh, individual universities as their own teams. And so the best course of action for that was just to kind of send a UK all-star team, as it were. Uh, so we hosted our own national championships. Uh, and the four best men and two best women from that are now here to compete uh, in your national championships. I mean, how how did that come about? Who orchestrated the national championship to even make this make this team and, and make this trip over? Yeah, so it was originally organised by Joe here, um, and then I kind of swooped in to help, uh, and I'm now taking responsibility for the kind of the UK university disc golf brand, as it were. Um, but there were a few different people who helped out in that, weren't there? Yeah. Um, so it's happened twice now. Uh, our second event pretty much doubled in size. There was kind of a, a lack of UK disc golf being played, whereas the UK ultimate scene is actually very, very strong. And I just wondered why that was. Um, and it's nice to see that it's starting to gain a bit of traction. And I think things like this are really going to help people get inspired to see that, you know, they can take part and get that really high level of competition that you guys are offering out here, which is amazing. Um, we couldn't have done it without, obviously, Jack's come in and helped. Um, and a big shout out to Katie Sluman back home, who's done all our graphics and a lot of our logistics. Um, and Adam from Ace Disc Golf, who is a partner company that's really supported the, the mission as well um, to help run the events. Did you all know each other at all? Like, when, uh, when did you <laughs> all meet? Abs absolutely not. It's kind of been collecting some scattered people. Like, I got to know a couple of people who were at university and played disc golf. Thought, right, well, there's some people to catch. And clearly, there's more out there who we just don't know about and try to put out the call as best we can. Like if you're a student who's playing disc golf, just come to an event that's for students. Um, originally, all we could offer was that it's a student championship. And then the big ticket draw of, hey, would you like to qualify for this team um, was just sensational and got some more. Unfortunately, some couldn't make it as well. So there's still people out there who I think would love to take part and, and get an opportunity at this. What's been the relationship like with College Disc Golf as you kind of you know, you know put this team together and get all this in motion yeah it's been fantastic they honestly couldn't have been more helpful in the process um they've helped you know helped us think about the logistics of actually how to get there and, and where to stay and all of that they've obviously facilitated actually allowing our team to play in division one for both the men and the women and um, despite not kind of going through the regular state qualification process that they have over here um, and they've just been an absolute joy to work with um yeah I, I couldn't speak more highly of all the stuff they've done for us yeah i, I mean reaching out was entirely a pipe dream um, I know a guy called Seamus has previously tried to run a UK um, kind of college event and has touched out to um, college disc golf before and just threw it out there as something he'd done. And so we thought, let's get in contact. And then John's warmth and enthusiasm and proactiveness to, to make this happen is really, it's a massive, massive credit to him and everyone else obviously involved. Awesome. Uh, Ophelia, I ask one question for you. Uh, what's sure. it like being here in uh, North Carolina at Winthrop University? Oh, it's warm. I can't. I cannot complain about the weather. Um, we've come from like three, four degrees and drizzle back home. So to come out and be literally standing in the sun in shorts is just amazing. Yeah. You know, what's it been like to see you know seven hundred competitors out here getting ready for the week? Absolutely mad. There's like at an average tournament in the UK, you'll get maybe one to two hundred people, if that. Um, so to come out and see. Did you say 700? That's that's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of plastic as well. Like, yeah. How long have you been playing disc golf? Uh, I've been playing for about three or four years now, okay. so not have, too long. Have you ever watched any video of USDGC or Throw Pink or this property? Occasionally. Um, not, I'm not a massive like YouTube watcher, no. but um, I'll watch it if it's on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah what, what is this, the strength of y'all's team, you and Christine? I'll let you take this one. Yeah. Our strength. Yeah. What, what makes y'all a good team? 
I think it's just that we got good chemistry. Um, we know how to play each other's strengths and weaknesses. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Jack, back to you. I mean, you know, same question. I mean, are you familiar with this property? And um, have you, you know, watched USDGC or any of that? Yeah, definitely watched a whole bunch of footage from all the different providers that put that onto the internet. And it's absolutely incredible to actually be here. For me, the particular hole was the gate hole. I think it's being played as hole um, three or four um, for the men's course. Um, and just actually witnessing that in person, having watched so many of these storied pros, you know, skimming it off the fence and in for aces and all sorts and getting to actually throw that ourselves, I think has been incredible. And, and the same for all of the different notable holes, hole one down here and all that. It's been incredible to see it in person. I think particularly you know, living across the pond from all of this, it kind of is a bit of a dream that we'd ever get to witness the course, let alone play it in a, a PDJ major in this way. Yeah, I mean, what, we'll end with that. You know, what what does it mean to just be here playing disc golf and representing your school and your countries, um, you know, in South Carolina? Yeah, it, it absolutely couldn't mean more. I think um, there's definitely an element of, of bringing the flag over and, and wearing it on our chests that um, has brought out a patriotism in me that I didn't know I had. Um, <laughs> Yeah, getting to represent the country, represent the universities that we all come from. Um, I'm sure we're all uniquely proud of them. And, and if we weren't under the flag, we'd be battling each other for which one's the particular best one. Um, so, yeah, getting to properly represent who we are and what we stand for and, and to compete against the Americans at that and the Canadians as well is fantastic. Um, you know, what do you hope to accomplish this week? You know, you talked about the growth going back home and hope you just, just continues to grow disc golf in the UK. So you know, what would be the one goal in that regard? I hope that people see this and just want to take part, right? Like it's the legitimacy that our project needs where it's, you know, we were offering it and it almost sounds like a joke, like, hey, <laughs> come to our small event and get on a plane. Um, but if they see that we got on a plane, <laughs> like that's all I want is someone to think like that could be me. They're here, right here in uh, South Carolina for the College Disc Golf National Championships. So nice to meet you. So great to see you here. We'll see you out here this week. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having us.
All right, and we were back with tournament director Chad Sullivan. Chad, it's finally here, the College Disc Golf National Championship. Just break down, you know, what that moment's like that it has arrived. Yeah, we've made it. I mean, you know, the preparation that goes into, you know, an undertaking like this is is wild no matter where or when or how you do it. But, um, you know, we at the U.S. Disc Golf team, we've got some cheat codes in the pocket, which is always nice. You know, we've got 25 years of legwork done in Rock Hill, in the disc golf community, and spe specifically here at Rock or at Winthrop University. Um, you know, it's uh, wild how much it takes to build the courses and get all those things done, you know, marking the courses, getting the rules together, promoting the event, setting up the registration, getting teams involved, and then you throw in the, the wrinkle of college disc golf and, and uh, bringing in student athletes and just trying to, you know, wrangle a herd of 800 humans that all want to move in a different direction. It's, uh, it's quite the thing. Well, let's just start with where we're sitting in a, a new venue this year, um, you know, central to Rock Hill with Winthrop being the crown jewel. I mean, what's it been like just watching you or you watching these players experience to walk on this property for the first time? It's so fun, you know, it's it's like merging two of the two of the worlds that I've been exposed to over the last couple of years with with the college disc golf event. Last year was my first year a part of that, you know, that party and it's it's so special anybody who's been a part of it knows. It's just it's got a different vibe. It's such a unique kind of happy free spirit kind of energy, but it's also, you know, real deal competition. These these uh, student athletes are out here to represent their colors and and take home a title. Um, but being able to do it in a spot that has the history that Winthrop and Rock Hill have with disc golf is it's just a, a meeting of two awesome entities to make something even bigger and better. You know, what was the driving force behind the venue change? Uh, one of the big things, you know, as far as before I was involved technically, but there was a, a goal to uh, bring the event here and a plan to bring the event here in, in 2020. Um, certainly the pandemic and things didn't, didn't let that happen as we had liked, but uh, we had a, an awesome and super memorable stint up in the, uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains at North Cove, which as anybody knows, it's, that's familiar. It's an incredible property. Um, disc golf is top notch and, and uh, being up there. Um, the beauty is also one of the issues and the challenges that comes up is the remoteness, the location. Uh, hosting an event as widespread as this with you know 800 humans and and all these things it's just it's incredibly challenging to begin with but when you factor in the the remoteness and and stuff that the property there offered uh we we really wanted to get back to what we thought was a good idea originally which is hey let's bring this thing here to to rock hill and and uh, showcase you know more than just what the disc golf world knows as USDGC and the Throw Pink event and and uh, in the Winthrop Arena, we wanted to kind of expose the opportunity to compete here in a different way, and uh, we're so excited how it came together. Yeah, you know the disc golf world's familiar with where we're sitting right now, but you know just talk about some of the holes that you know fans will be familiar with when they see. Uh, Winthrop being played. Absolutely, yeah. Coming back to to Winthrop for this event, you know. It would be crazy to come play disc golf on this property without, you know, hitting the, the flavor of, of USDGC. You got the bamboo hole on uh, what is USDGC hole seven. Um, that is actually hole four for what we're, we're dubbing the, uh, the Winthrop Lakefront layout. Um, uh, we've got the uh, the iconic, you know, hole five is in play, uh, but it's in a different way. We had that split up into a par four and a par three, and that's actually where the round starts. So um, it's, it's also a really cool opportunity to kind of, you know, try some of the things that people have been thinking about and throwing around as ideas and being able to deploy it. Um, we're so excited to bring other holes into the mix. You know, we got the, the throw pink hole out on the road there, which is hole 10 normally for the big event in the fall. Um, and then we've got some of the Coliseum holes, you know, like the raised, the raised target to the downhill sloping away. You've got the iconic, you know, Gannon Burr from a couple years ago and he cashed that putt. And now these student athletes get to come out here and see what that's all about. And, and you know how it is when you get out there and you see some of those shots and things that are iconic from other events and you see what they did and you just get a different appreciation for some of those stories. Yeah, but also some other great courses in the area and Absolutely. play as well. I mean, you're dealing with a wide range of skills and, sure. and trying to factor in everyone to make sure they enjoy and have a competitive time as well. So, you know, break down the other courses and maybe kind of the mix that they'll get between the two here at Winthrop and elsewhere. Yeah, so we have uh, Westminster Park, um, which is uh, 
in Rock Hill, uh, right on the Catawba River. Um, it's a rolling hill park property that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's one of those unique mixes of open shots and wooded tight, you know, quote unquote, Carolina golf, if, if you're familiar with the trees and, uh, you know, they like discs. So go out there to Westminster. You're going to find a great mix variety. Um, and then right across the uh, the river, you know, a couple hundred yards down the road is what uh, what is known as Camp Canaan. Um, and that's got a phenomenal course. It's one of the more unique courses that you'll experience, especially in competition. Um, there's designs and, and elements that that property uh, offers that you wouldn't find anywhere else. It sits on an island that uh, the Catawba River forks around. And uh, throughout the entire round, you're playing on the banks of a, of a river with uh, unique, you know, roll away opportunities and things like that. There's some some iconic and unique features in play, like a, a basket uh, sits on a spiral staircase, and um, you know it's fun. That's one of the biggest things. And and the Winthrop Meadows course that we have out here at Winthrop, uh, it's a, a new layout. Um, there has been golf out there before. It was actually uh, the host for one of the first majors in in the early years that was out here at Winthrop, and kind of being able to bring that back around is is really exciting and. Uh, it's it's a good test. It takes uh, takes over the old former ball golf course out here at Winthrop, and uh, and we're hopeful to see uh, see that stick around for years to come. All right, you know, seven hundred plus players. Um, there's storylines everywhere. Just a couple I wanted to hit on. You know, Ilkin Grow, a two-time major winner, factored in disc golf when he chose to go to Cincinnati. You know, obviously the defending champs that probably helps a little bit in the recruiting pitch. But I mean, what? How can you wrap your brain around that, that someone's choosing to go spend their college years and disc golf is playing a small role in that? Absolutely, yeah. I feel like it's a peek, you know, into that disc golf world that a lot of us have dreamed about being real over the years. You know, if you've been in the sport for a while, you know, you fondly talk about the days ahead where, you know, oh, it's going to be on ESPN and we're going to get the notoriety that we feel the sport deserves because of how awesome it is. Um, and seeing the universities put together scholarship programs and, and to see, you know, these young men and women change their dreams and goals just to line it up with their disc golf career is, is something that's, you know, I think we need to be celebrating it and, and those involved that have angled for this to happen are, are truly celebrated for making that thing real. We just spoke with an incredible team from the UK as well. Um, just break down that process. Obviously, they had to do things a little differently, but have banded together and made the trip to South Carolina and are here competing. Yeah, we are so excited to be able to say that this is a worldwide event. Um, we have multiple teams from outside the United States. Uh, we've got some Canadian teams out here. And uh, we also have uh, facilitated a, a team to represent the United Kingdom. Um, it is a, a team built of some disc golfers that go to different universities and programs. And we were able to, uh, to find a way to get them over the ocean to come out here and, and compete in the States. And, you know, the sky's the limit when you think about that you know not being limited to just a single continent for something at all is you know mind bending as far as the exponential growth that's available in that moment and uh, we're super excited to see what that brings you know the countries like Estonia and Finland are absolutely booming and exploding with disc golf and we know that they're in school and we know that they play disc golf so hopefully we can facilitate getting that together and, and seeing more countries represented in the future. Awesome, Chad. Well, thank you so much for everything that you've done leading up to this event. The show is here, and uh, we'll get rolling tomorrow. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you.
All right, we are now joined with a team from Winthrop University right here in the backyard. And so, first of all, what's it like just having all these disc golfers, you know, uh, on campus and from around the world, really? I mean, it's an exciting time. We're really happy to be here and happy to have everyone out. It's just really cool to see all the different new shots that are getting created from all the different players. I mean, it's amazing to have people from around the world just getting to experience what we experience every week. It's truly, truly awesome. Yeah, the disc golf world knows this place, you know, for decades now. Um, what, what does the course look like on a normal Tuesday? I know it's probably a little different now. It's obviously different during USDGC and throw pink, but what does it look like on a normal day? Um, normal days, it's pretty, like, empty, I want to say. Um, most of us have class, so obviously we're doing those. But, like, when we do get out and play, um, normally it's just, like, we all play out together. And it's I want to say it's empty probably 90% of the time. There are a few, like, couple guys that we'll get together with and, like, play, but most of the time. Uh, I mean, does the course change? Yeah. Like, are the baskets still in the same spot? Um, are you still throwing them in the of, pond? Or the, some, the, the pond? Some of the holes are different. Um, I want to say uh, they get rid of uh, the actual, like, lake, lakefront course that um, I think D1 is playing. Um, but, I and I wish that they would keep that there for, like, maybe, like, every now and then we could go and like actually play it just to see how we do. Mm -hmm. um, I do wish we could actually do it. <laughs> um, but no, uh, they do like shorten some of the holes to make it like more like friendly to the open to the public. Cause it's, it's a public course. So anyone could play. Right. Yeah. You know, we all know Winthrop, but several other great courses, uh, you know, in play this week, what can fans expect from that? Or what can these teams expect from those courses? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Canaan is definitely a much more difficult course. It's super wooded. You got a river running right through everything that it ends up bringing in some scary shots, kind of makes you game plan a lot more. You're a lot more concerned going there. Um, similar to a couple holes I hear with Winthrop makes you rethink your game plan. Um, Westminster, it's a newer course, not much um, going on there. It's pretty open, couple couple wooded holes, but um, excited to have two layouts now. West and East is definitely going to be interesting. But outside of that, I think it'll be exciting weekend. Yeah. Now tell us about the team. You know, what, what is the strength of y'all's team? Uh, what, what do you want to ho hope to accomplish this week? Who's throwing the farthest? Who's missing the most putts? <laughs> things like that. Uh, I think I can say um, we've we've restructured our team a little. We've lost a couple members. Um, we got some new guys, Abe and Will. Uh, me and Alex are returning, and we're happy to be here. But um, I think what I've got, I've probably got the most distance right now, just just a little. I'll probably also miss the most putts though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, strength wise, I think we'll we'll give uh, D three definitely a good run. We unfortunately did not get to to qualify for any tournaments this year, outside of out of outside of here. But, yeah. you know, when you heard the news that it was coming here, what was that? Were you excited about that? Oh, absolutely. Home course advantage is always definitely a positive and just love being in Rock Hill, so it's, it's definitely exciting. You know, uh, obviously your second event, second college nationals? Yes, sir, yeah, for our team, we um, started, yeah, last year, so definitely excited to be back in it, and it's uh, always cool to see all the different teams. Yeah, it's bigger than ever, so, I mean, you know, yeah. again, you know, what is it like just seeing 150 schools just being out here? And what, I mean, more than that, kind of break down the atmosphere, and like how, how competitive is it once this thing kicks off um, tomorrow? First things first, it's a very unique, like, thing. Like, I've competed in a whole bunch of different types of tournaments, and, like, practicing is one thing, but when you get to the actual, like, playing in tournament field, it's completely different. Um, last year, I definitely choked uh, a little bit on a lot of different uh, plays or shots that I would normally throw, like, normally, but would just, like, grip lock or throw right into the ground. Um but being able to like compete last year and then now competing this year, I'm a lot. I feel like I'm calmer and everything. Like I can like settle down, know that I I can't like get an ace on every single hole. Now I know I can't, but like it gives me the freedom to like I can I know what my strengths are, so I can play to those strengths instead of like trying to play to like do the best thing, like try and like pitch a perfect round, but like play to my strengths definitely. Yeah, for sure. Got a major, major title on the line and a, a lot of pressure, too. So what has been your favorite thing about the week so far? Oh, favorite thing about the week? I mean, getting everything set up, seeing it all kind of start to evolve and, and get to where we are now. It's It's been really cool, like, coming through week by week and just seeing everything getting, like, step by step. You're like, all right, here it goes. We're off, you know, ready ready to compete. Except all right, exciting. guys, that's, that's the Winthrop Eagles disc golf yes, team. Sir. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you out there this week.
All right, go Eagles. All right, and we are closing things out today with the executive director of the PDGA, Doug Bjerkus. Doug, we've been to Winthrop many times, back here again for the first time ever as the College Disc Golf National Championship. Um, your first day on the ground, what, what's your first impression of just this event? Oh, it's it's special. Anytime you come onto these grounds, of course, with the, the huge history they've got here with the USDGC, Throw Pink, in fact, they were doing some women's national tournaments at some point uh, out here as well. There, there's a ton of history, and it's uh, a proven track. So to see, what is it, close to 800 college disc golfers here getting ready to play, not just on uh, the Winthrop course here, but on some other courses in this community, it's it's exciting. I was I was thrilled thrilled to see it, and uh, you, you don't quite get the magnitude of it until you see it. And there's these college teams everywhere practicing getting ready it's it's exciting i'm i'm actually kind of grateful i didn't discover disc golf until i was out of college because i don't know if i would have finished college had i been playing disc golf uh in those days 
I mean, the fact that you just said there's close to 800 college kids that are here competing and representing their school in, in a very legitimate way, you know, what does that say about just another area of the sport that continues to grow? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a great uh, data point for us as we look at where the sport is going. I mean, I think every year they've run this event, it seems they get more people that are playing, more universities, colleges, or fielding teams. It's... Uh, um, you know, at, at every level, I think we're starting to see more players, whether it's uh, in, in PE programs in schools or, you know, several states have pretty robust high school disc golf programs. I know the PDGA is working on on high school disc golf at the same time. Uh, and then you have college disc golf. It's it's all growing and it's a great base for what our sport is built on. And uh, um yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a future professional world disc golf champion that's uh, competing in the college ranks right now. I mean, we've talked to a bunch of teams today. You know, they've spoken about recruiting and scholarships and their university officially recognizing them, not just as a club, but as a program, giving them money to get on an airplane to come out here. Just so many things that have legitimized this. I mean, how do you continue to see this particular event grow in that regard? Yeah, I think I think it will. I think it'll be easier. I know that uh, I was friends with some of the guys uh, in Colorado uh, at Colorado State University back, boy, that might have been 10, 12 years ago that they won uh, a, a collegiate title. Uh, not not at this location, but I, I think it was at the Hippodrome back then. But uh, uh, yeah, it was a lot of work and a lot of stress to even pay to get out here for that championship. And now that you hear about universities, you know, footing the bill for travel and, you know, having having these, these college athletes represent the university here, even though it's not an NCAA sport, they're still representing their school and these schools are getting more and more into it. Um, you know, being an Emporia, Kansas resident and seeing what's happening with Emporia State University, th there'll be an article every day in the in the paper or on the 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 KVOE. Uh, 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 what do you call a uh, newspaper on on the web? Uh, I guess it's kind of a you know a digital a digital newspaper. Uh, there'll be an article every day about how ESU is doing, and and that's just one community. I'm sure that's happening all over the. The country, and in fact, even the world, as I understand, we have some international college teams that are here playing. So, yeah, I, the future is bright, and college disc golf is a great litmus test for for where the sport is going, and it's it's going in a great direction. You know, every major has moving parts, and this one certainly lives up to that bill as far as what's going on behind the scenes. So, uh, kind of speak about you know the PG, PGA support behind the scenes a little bit, and working with you know, Chad Sullivan and Jonathan Poole and the college disc golf team. Oh, yeah. So the, the PDJ loves to come to work with the, the college disc golf team. These guys know what they're doing. I mean, Jonathan Poole is arguably the, the, one of the best TDs to, to ever grace our sport. Uh, Chad Sullivan is, is an amazing TD in his own right. Um, uh, these guys know how to put on a show, and it's nice that we can come in and we don't focus on the event as much as we do the competition, but having Marshalls here, having our operations and logistics team here, having Rebecca Duffy, our director of competition here, just helps uh, uh, tighten up uh, the, the competition itself. Uh, Todd Line is here to take care of scoring. There's a unique uh, uh, scoring methodology for the collegiates here, and uh, we provide support for that as, for that as well. Um, it's like a lot of our majors. We come in and we partner with whoever the locals are that are running the event and give them as much support as we can to make the the event as good as we can and and we're doing that here this week are there any any talks about how this partnership between the pga and college disc golf can can continue to grow not just the national championship but the entire process as a whole yeah uh i i think the pdga can get uh a little more active and involved in 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 college disc golf uh I think mostly in, in scoring, um, you know, one of the things we've uh, been brainstorming are, are ways to improve our scoring capabilities to allow for not just scoring at something like the collegiate championships where they have a unique scoring model, but for affiliate clubs all over the country that want to run match play or team golf or, you know, some special new fangled way to enjoy our sport. We, we want to be on the leading edge of being able to take score and keep score for those events. And I think that would be our first step is just providing a, a technology solution that allows them to, to, to track and take scores just like you would at a normal stroke play tournament that the PDGA has hundreds of them every single weekend. So, um, yeah, this partnership is going to grow. All right, your first time here experiencing this event, what are you most looking forward to? 
You know, this is my first time in Winthrop for the collegiates. Well, it's everyone's first time at Winthrop for the collegiates, but it's my first collegiate event, and I've uh, I've heard a lot about the the opening ceremony and just the pomp and circumstance be, uh, behind all the teams coming into uh, into the. I, I guess it was outdoors at at. Uh, North Cove uh, in in more recent years, but uh, this year it's going to be in the Coliseum here on campus, and just to see all these teams come in uh, in their colors and their uniforms, their jerseys, whatever they're wearing to to signify the, the school they're from, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. And then of course, anytime you see champions crowned, that's a special special moment. I don't care if it's pro worlds or junior worlds or collegiates or shoot. Sometimes the uh, trophy's given out at a local B tier. Uh, that, that ceremony is kind of cool. It's always, it's always nice to see people recognized for good play um, where they've competed at the highest level and, and come out on top. And I'm really curious to see who that's going to be this week here at the Collegiates. Well, thank you so much for the time, Doug. And that'll wrap us up for today. The College Disc Golf National Championship kicks off tomorrow here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Stay tuned to PDGA.com for full coverage of this PDGA major.